Hello there, welcome to another VidIQ Interviews, and today I'm joined by Stephen Van. Now, to describe what Stephen Van, Van's channel is, well, it's a little, I might say, minimalist in his uh, channel description, which simply says, always creating. Now, Stephen Van has been on YouTube for around about two years now, started in May 2017, currently has 9.5 million views, 86,000 subscribers. Welcome to the uh, interview, Stephen. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's just jump straight into it then. So um, uh, the question I always ask uh, our um, YouTubers who we interview is, uh, what is your origin story here on YouTube? Uh, well, I was actually kind of inspired uh, to start on YouTube because um, somebody who you might know, Zayovo, uh, he runs a channel similar to mine. And basically, I wasn't really on YouTube before I started making videos. Uh, I, I'm only on YouTube because I'm making videos. I barely watch any YouTube videos. I you know, I, I'm not really on YouTube, but, um, the, you know, the, the time I was, I was actually on YouTube, I saw a guy, you know, who's around my age creating content and he, he used to live in my city as well. Uh, so there was some sort of connection there and I thought, you know, why not start a channel? This guy's, you know, basically like me and he's creating content and he's successful at it. And at that time he was only at like 10 K uh, now he's much bigger. Um, uh, but that was kind of what sparked my interest for it like seeing another, you know, teenager doing exactly what I, you know, I want to do. Uh, so that's how I started. And then I started with graphic design tutorials and then later that transition to video editing and photography, uh, because as I were, was making these videos, I was learning how to edit myself. And there was a lot of people come to my channel who were beginners at graphic design. Um, so I thought, why not help, you know, them with video editing as well. And then just recently, I've been getting into, you know, photo editing and that sort of stuff. Uh, so essentially, my channel is a way for me to teach people what I've learned um, and what I'm doing. So whenever I learn something new, I'll post it on my channel so that people, you know, can learn that too. Interesting. So one of the things I picked up from there is that you said that you don't watch much YouTube. Was that at the time when you first started your YouTube channel? And would you still say that you watch less YouTube than maybe other YouTubers do? Uh, uh, could you expand on that a bit more? Uh, I just feel like when YouTube was out, I wasn't like watching, you know, you know, a lot of people when they're, well, at least my friends, when they were younger, uh, they would, you know, subscribe to channels, you know, watch every video. I wasn't really like that. I was on YouTube just for, you know, specific reasons. Like if I needed yeah. to know, some, learn something, stuff like that. Um, sometimes I just go there if I need some entertainment. I, similar to how I treat like Netflix and that sort of stuff. I go there if I really need it. Um, so I do believe I do watch less than other people uh, because I feel like if I keep, you know, watching, you know, my competitors and stuff like that, I'll kind of become less creative. I'll just take their ideas, stuff like that. I, I obviously do watch, you know, videos. I always comment on, you know, my friends' videos and stuff like that whenever they do post, uh, just for encouragement, stuff like that. But um, on a daily basis on YouTube, I'm on YouTube for less than an hour, like mm -hmm. just watching videos. Um, other than that, I'm like replying to comments, but I don't really count that as, you know, watching videos. Um, but yeah, less than an hour every day. Uh, it's interesting. It's, I think that's one of the things that many YouTubers actually struggle with is that they, um, end up creating so much content that they have very little time to consume content. But in your case, it's a little different in that, uh, you are there to really get the information that you need. And that's something that you do in your own channel, which is pretty much yeah. uh, very much how you explain it. Uh, well, as I was looking through your channel, uh, one of the videos was titled YouTube as a teenager, where you talk about some of the unique challenges that are brought to you as a young video creator. Can you talk a little bit more about them? I feel like everybody really has the same struggle on YouTube. It's like, um, you know, consistency coming up with ideas, stuff like that. I just, uh, for me, um, you know, a majority of my fan base is younger. Um, and so I thought I'd make a video for that just because they could relate with me. Uh, it wasn't really there because there's a lot of issues and a lot of, you know, stuff we had to go through. It's just for my, you know, fan base, just because they would want to watch it. Um, I think the biggest uh, thing is that most young people probably can't afford the equipment or afford things. Um, in order to create videos and stuff like that. So the main point I was trying to bring in that video was that um, you have to really work with what you have. Um, you can't just 
you know, start with um, equipment that people have worked, you know, hard for. Like there's YouTubers who started with nothing and now they have equipment, but then you only look at the final result. You're looking at what they have right now, but they didn't really have anything before. Yeah. So that was the main point I was trying to, you know, bring across the whole thing. Uh, I also talked about like school and stuff like that and just like pressures and like what pe- other people are saying about your channel. Um, because when you're a kid, you know, you, you listen to what people say, you listen, you, you look up to older people, to, you know, for their opinion, stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's sort of what I was talking about. Just, um, those influences, like people, other people, what they're going to say about like your work uh, and how that doesn't really matter, but you should still listen to them obviously. And then also the money part, um, you know, that support. So financial support and like actual like support. In the two years that you've been YouTubing, have you noticed a shift in attitudes towards being a YouTube person? Like maybe a couple of years ago, people thought of it some, something a bit nerdy or geeky, and now it's seen as really cool. Uh, have you noticed that when you tell people that you're a YouTuber or you make YouTube videos? Uh, yeah, definitely. I remember back uh, when I started, it was sort of like a, it wasn't very popular thing to do. I, I guess like people thought, um, it was fun. Like, you know, you just post random videos, but, um, I think it was always like that. I think there's a couple of people who get really serious with, you know, consistency, stuff like that. And then there's other people who just post random stuff. Uh, I really think, I think it depends on like how you approach it. Uh, but definitely when I started, people thought of it a certain way and then now they think of it a certain way. Um, just because now I'm actually really consistent with it. Um, but before it was, it seemed like a hobby. Um, like people thought like it was a hobby like it still is like very fun to create videos and stuff like that but there's also another side to it you know like for my personal brand to get it clients you know stuff like that um there's that aspect like the business aspect as well um but before it was you know people just thought of it as like i like to make videos i make videos like i did start for that reason but there's other stuff now yeah do you see uh youtube then as potentially a a career path going forward or is it a bit too early to answer that question uh i think uh youtube can help me with my career i don't think it will be my career because uh what i do with youtube and how how helps my career is uh basically like i'm a photographer and videographer i get hired for events you know weddings stuff like that right okay so um this is a way to sh- have like a portfolio for me yeah. also um, help, you know, bring value to people. And then um, by giving value to people, people will like want to give some back, right? They'll hire me for something. They'll hit me back, you know, you know, stuff like that. And, um, and also just building this audience is helpful for me um, just because I can get feedback on my stuff, on my work, but I can also like help other people who are doing the same things as me. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to do more lifestyle, like behind the scenes stuff to see the life of like what I do, like how freelancing is, um, how, how I, you know, do photo shoots, stuff like that. Um, so that's what I've been trying to attack like, um, this year, uh, you know, so yeah. How do you organize your time between, I guess, uh, school, professional clients and YouTube itself? It sounds like there's a lot going on there. I think it's prioritizing. Like, um, sometimes, you know, there's a day where I'll have schoolwork and have, you know, like client work and stuff like that. I just, I just got to weigh which one's more important. Um, if there's a deadline, there's usually deadlines for both of them, like client work and school work. Uh, usually I do like which one's, you know, going to happen sooner, which one do I need to get done first? And I'll do that first. Um, and, uh, whenever there's a break or there's a holiday or something like that, I will maximize the time, uh, during the winter break. Um, it's like in December to early January. I, um, it was two weeks. And what I did was I, I told all of my clients, like, if you want to do a photo shoot, video shoot, it should be in this, you know, time, you know, spot. So I did like 14 photo shoots in the two weeks. So like every a photo shoot every day. Um, and this weekend, like last weekend, I did um, like five photo shoots because I can't, you know, afford to do it during this, you know, this when their school is right, because I, I can't be coming home late and then doing my schoolwork. So um, it's also like scheduling, like, you know, thinking ahead of time, like, what you know what you're going to do on a certain day so um i'll write everything down on a calendar stuff like that um so if i have an event coming up like a client work coming up like i'll put it on my calendar so that i know that i have that upcoming um or else like 
uh, it'll be a hassle to like, you know, forget something and then remember, and then you have to do that right away and then, you know, stuff like that. So I, I guess uh, planning ahead of time and also prioritizing which one's, more, you know, more important. I'm sure uh, there are many of us grown-ups here um, listening to you describe how organized and mature, responsible you are for your work and going, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's very much a skill to have and continue using it. Um, so we'll, we'll move on a, a little bit more specifically about your YouTube content. And again, going through your channel, and you were talking about Zivayo, who um, you, you seem to create content with the intention of what we call evergreen content. And that's content that's uh, may not be popular and go viral immediately, but it has the potential to uh, get to the top of search rankings and then be used by many people as tutorials and it could stay there for months, even years. So um, what do you look for in evergreen content? Is there something that you're specifically targeting or how, what's your strategy there? Uh, I think there are certain things in the photography, videography field, like video editing, graphic design, stuff like that, that a lot of people talk about, they'll continue to talk about. Um, so I cover those topics. So like certain effects that you will see in like every single, you know, video that people create or, you know, stuff like that, or topics that people like how to get clients. That's one thing that um, a lot of people will continue to, you know, search up, search up. Yeah. Um, there's also like, I made a video music video about music video effects and that's become a very popular thing. Uh, and there's tutorials about that and stuff like that. And so basically now I think the best way to do this is like make like a bunch of lists. So like top 10, top five, stuff like that. Um, and you know, it'll appear high in the search rank usually. And also, um, it's really helpful for people like no matter when they watch it. Uh, if it's not real, if the, things that are mentioned in the video are not relevant. There's other, you know, things that are in the video. Like if one thing doesn't work, there's like a couple other things that will work in that, you know, in this time of day. Right. So if it's like a top five video um, and one of the top five things don't, you know, work or like aren't relevant to today, there's other stuff that maybe. Um, so that's why I try to do um, just make lists. I think lists help a lot. And then just anything that's really in discussion and will continue to be in discussion. Was there any particular video that um, I guess it, it w really set your channel off and running? Like you just cracked that one tutorial that really helped. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's actually two, but they're like the same video. Right. One's just an updated video of the other. It's how to make an intro. It's my most viewed video right now. Um, at the time, there was only like five intro tutorials. Um, one of them was Ziovo's. Um, and basically, uh, what I did, like I, I pushed that video a lot on social media. I was like replying to every comment to, you know, get engagement on the video, stuff like that. Um, so I pushed that video really hard because I knew that there wasn't a lot of competition with that video and that really took off. So the first video, uh, it, it has like 500,000 views. Um, and then the second video has like a million views now. Uh, but at the time, uh, what happened was that intro, the first one was doing really well. And then the updated version came out. And so I made a tutorial on that. And then I used the first video to push the second one. So using cards, you know, and yeah. um, pin comments, you know, descriptions, stuff like that. And then a lot of the people who were watching that video went to the other video for the updated video. And then it worked out really well. Do you, do you find that once you had that successful uh, set of videos that YouTube gave you a more favorable promotion when you're doing a videos that was similar to the content. Cause what I find for a lot of YouTubers is that they keep plugging away at these topics and they never really hit any success. And it tends to favor one or two YouTubers who keep nailing that subject time and time again. Have you, have you found that to be true or, or not? I'm not sure because like my channel hasn't been always consistent in terms of like numbers. Okay. Uh, it was much, when I started, it was much higher than it is now. I, I think it's because, you know, over time, you know, uh, people, you know, evergreen content, right? People will, are going to, you know, watch later in time, like, uh, like continue to watch it. So I think right now my numbers are low, but they'll rise again and they'll drop again. Like, I think that's just with tutorials. Um, but definitely when I was starting, I think I put out a lot of videos, a lot of like, um, sort of generic video ideas. So like how to make a banner, like very, you know, big video, you know, video titles, like how to yeah, make YouTube banner. fundamentals basically. Yeah. So those videos help me out. Like I don't do that anymore. I think that's maybe the reason why, um, those did better. Um, but 
definitely when I started out, I think it was more favorable because I was appearing higher in search. I was like getting suggested for a lot of, you know, content, right? Like uh, yeah. my video would be appearing in a lot. So maybe, you know, like two years ago, or I, I think it depends on the content you make. I think it's easier for some people to be suggested for a video. If it's like, you know, ad friendly, you know, people would want to watch it, you know, like stuff like that. Indeed. Uh, so uh, uh, we're going to move on now to what I think is, the main focus, but not the total focus of your channel is um, uh, creating thumbnails. So we're, again, we're looking a bit more at photography here. So uh, for your process in creating a thumbnail, how long does it take to make? What programs do you generally use? And how do you come up with a concept? Because some of the thumbnails that we have, and I'm going to show some on screen as we're talking through this, are, are pretty spectacular. Uh, there was, I've always made like different thumbnails. Like I have different styles. <laughs> like every time I change my style and make a thumbnail tutorial on the previous one. Uh, okay. People will notice that. So, uh, but usually what I do is, you know, I look at the video idea. I'm, and I think about like what image kind of represents that I'll search it up on, you know, a royalty free image website or whatever. And then I'll place it in the background. Then the text, usually I make the text like a focus, but not too big. I, I like to leave it smaller. Um, and usually the biggest part of my thumbnails is like where the text is placed, where the images are placed. If it's like symmetrical or if it, it's, you know, if it's in the right place, I think where the text appears is really important. Um, now what I do is I'll take an image that I have, like I'll actually be taking the photo uh, of an image before I use like Google and stuff like that for the images. But now because I've gone into photography, I can use my own photos in my thumbnails and then that's the background. Um, and if not, if I don't have a photo that, uh, you know, represents the title, well, I'll, uh, go on like unsplash.com, which is a great website for like, you know, photography images and stuff like that. And I'll place that in the background, but usually it takes, I'd see like 30, 40 minutes to create a thumbnail. I use Photoshop. Uh, I think I've always used Photoshop, but what I've done recently is just make my thumbnails a lot cleaner, a lot simpler. Um, because right because in the in previous years i think my thumbnails were attracting like younger and a younger audience which is not bad uh because they were like colorful you know bright bold the topics that are covering were like for like beginners who starting out right but now i want i want to like establish my channel as like a just a place where you can go for whatever content you know yeah um, interesting so that you're trying to actively change the demographic of your audience yeah and the the um the target audience, so more professional, uh, higher quality through simply the power of a thumbnail, which is fascinating. Yeah. So if you notice in my pre in previous years, my thumbnails are very colorful, like orange, purple, or whatever. Yeah. Now it's just an image text placed on it, like strategically, like where, like where it looks the best and a logo of the program that I'm using for it. And that's about it. Yeah. Um, it's not that hard to make my thumbnails now. Like before it was much harder. It took a, probably like twice as long. Um, but I've kind of toned it down a bit, made it more clean and you know, simplistic. I changed my YouTube banner. It used to be much different as well. Changed the intro. My, uh, it, now it's 2d it's flat. Like I, I branded my, um, you know, my channel differently this past year. So, yeah. So yeah, essentially a rebrand, yeah. uh, for, for, for a new, for new content. Yeah. At, so if we were going to look at some of the fundamentals of um, creating thumbnails, what would you say are the three most important things? Uh, the color scheme. I think people sometimes use too many colors. Like right. I think stick to like two, three max. Right. Um, the image that's in the thumbnail. I think that's important. Like, um, you know, don't be too clickbaity and just like throw an image that's not in the video or related to the video in it. But you know, if you, if you're in the video, you know, make like a, you know, facial expression, stuff like that. I know a lot of people do that um, or, you know, like over exaggerate, right? So that people will come across the video and like see it and like, you know, click on it because they see like cool thumbnail. Um, and then the text, I think sometimes um, people will place text where like they'll have white text and they'll place it in an area that's very bright and you can't even see the text or the opposite. Like, or what they'll do is they'll cover the entire like thumbnail with text or yeah. you can't see the text at all. I think the placement of the text and the size of the text is also important. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think I would uh, just add to the text. Sometimes the text is not always required or should be yeah, significantly yeah. different to the title because the title should be giving you the, the context and the, the image should be telling some sort of story, whatever that is. And certainly yours do that. Uh, we're actually going to now look at um, your favorite thumbnail. Uh, again, I'm going to put this on screen. Now, what I can see here is it's 15 effects. And it has you in uh, uh, quite a moody pose. And you're saying that you have, like, the color scheme is quite important. I can see what, two, maybe three yeah. colors max. Can you just go into a bit more detail about how, how you created this thumbnail? So I took a picture. This is actually not me. This is my friends. Um, oh, sorry. This I do is, apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a picture that I took. I think the composition of the photo is really well, like, really good. It's, like, right in the center. And then it just looks really nice. And there was, like, dark areas, bright areas, negative, positive space. It looks really nice. Um, so I use this image and also, uh, because the title of the video is music video effects, um, this is a popular spot to do music videos, um, in Toronto. Um, in case, like, it's just like, if you're local to it, you'll probably know, but, um, this spot, because it was related to music video somehow and it looked nice, I put it that in the background. Um, and also I didn't want the background to be too plain and just like a plain image. So there's people in it to kind of track people in. And then as you can see, the text is like placed well. And then you can see 15 only like, it's just not that visible, the 15 part. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I didn't want it to be too visible. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just looked better like that. And then um, the text is placed right in the middle slanted just a little bit. And I don't know, I think the placement of the text and the place in the composition of the image really look nice. And as you can see, I stuck to two colors um, just because it looked cleaner like that. I think if there's many colors and stuff like that, it would take away from the title and it wouldn't look as good. And what I see a lot of people do is they'll have, like if you have white text or a bright text, I think you should have a dark background. If you have a dark text, then you should yeah. have a bright background. So exactly. that's why, so yeah. the initial image was not that dark i lowered the the brightness of the image so that you can see the text more visibly so yeah that's what i did and that was my kind of approach to it So are there any uh, YouTubers who make thumbnails that you really aspire to? Like, you've gone, wow, yeah. these look fantastic. I would uh, not you, emulate them, but sort of are influenced by them. Uh, there's a couple. Usually they're like people in my field, um, like the technology field, stuff like that. Uh, one guy, I think everyone knows him, MKBHD, makes very clean thumbnails. Like yep. there's, Sometimes there's not even text. It's just like a question mark or exclamation mark. Like it's very clean. Um, sometimes like you don't need text all the time. If the image tells everything, like if the thumbnail tells everything, um, Justin, I don't know how to say his last, last name, but Justin T S E. That's how you spell Justin his last name. V, yes. He's uh, he's yeah. very close to me actually lives in Victoria. Yeah. So he is also very clean. Like his thumbnail has approached his whole channel. Um, that's like sort of the direction I'm trying to like, go for my channel, like that cleaner look lifestyle type look. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's a big influence for me right now. And then YC Imaging, he makes similar to videos to me. Um, I, I kind of got inspiration about like the, where to put the text and stuff like that, like the text placement, stuff like that off of his thumbnails because um, they're very clean as well. Like I, I like the clean approach. Yeah. Um, I used to like a very bold and, you know, big, you know, colorful approach. But like there's probably a couple of other channels that I like, like their thumbnails. I think a lot of like the phase clan when they used to make like uh like really good thumbnails like gaming thumbnails that stuff um looked really nice but other than that i'm not really sure at the time i had that i can think of but like the first two that came up was definitely like justin and mkbhd yeah cool well one of those is going to feature now in uh, a quick uh, segment that i'm calling the thumbnail challenge where we're gonna uh, let you look at a couple of thumbnails that we've um, selected here and sort of give you we want to what your thoughts on why these thumbnails are so successful so um the first one here is from uh kristen dominique uh, three and a half million subscribers a fairly simple one of a woman with two bits of text and it looks as if she has different makeup on different sides of her face so what are your thoughts on this one 
uh, I like it because it's clean. Like it's very clean. One color, basically, like the background, just the yep. color. Um, there's two pieces of text. I'm assuming like that has to do something with the title because, you know, I, I'm I'm guessing like, um, it, like this shows like it's comparing the two, like American, you know. Yeah, you, like that. you don't even need the video title for this. Yeah, you don't need the video title. Like you can like uh, like I don't know the video title. Yeah, and I can kind of grasp the idea, like the, you know, the gist of it, like what what the video is gonna be about. Um, yeah, just really clean. Just not not a lot of stuff. Like her face is in it. I guess it's like a makeup tutorial or something yeah, like that. It, yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. So it's good that she put you know the final look of it in it. So yeah, I guess it kind of before even looking at the title, you can tell what the video is about. I think yeah. that's the main thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll move on to uh, Dan TDM now. I'm sure everybody's heard of this YouTuber. And uh, this may be a thumbnail that sort of harks back to your um, previous days when you were trying to target a particular audience. And Dan's audience is certainly a younger one. And um, what are your thoughts on this? Thumbnail? I think it's, I think it's bold. Like it's, it's, it's there. Um, it, it's very plain though. Like, uh, like there's not, and, and uh, I think there's like, I don't know. I don't really like this thumbnail, but yep. I can see why people click on it. Like usually a way to like make your thumbnail stand out is like you add a stroke to the, like a per, like an object or stuff yep. like that. So there's a white like stroke border on it. Yep. Um, but yeah, I can see why it's probably relevant to the, um, you know, the title of the video. And um, you can see like what I mentioned before, like making a expression on your face, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You can see here, it's kind of like comedic and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, it probably fits his content as well. He probably has a young, younger audience, like stuff like that. So yeah, I think and, it just it fits. And even though we can't see the video title, uh, he, there's obviously a story being told here that he's there are bars and he's locked up behind some locked up behind bars. So there is obviously something going on there that, um, again, yeah, you might call it a bit clickbaity. And for his audience, that's probably uh, intentional and works. Yeah. M moving on to the next one then. Not everybody's favorite YouTuber at the moment. This is Logan Paul uh, stood in front of what looks to be a converted minibus with lots of lights on it. Um, what do you think of this one? Well, obviously it stands out, right? There's, <laughs> it's uh, very bright. It's very colorful. Uh, and he sticks to like two colors here. It's like, you know, purple and the rest, you know. So it looks, it looks nice. And um, yeah, so here he adds like a glow to himself i think a glow and a stroke is like probably the way to go to make your you know your, your an object look you know stand out more um and you can see his expression on his face as well it's like yep. uh i think that it's intentional once again like uh dance um and if it, you know it might be clickbait for some people but like it's intentional and it works for him um and yeah it just it's just simple to be honest and it, it stands out yep and finally, a uh, YouTuber you've uh, already mentioned, MKBHD. He's a tech uh, YouTuber. And this looks very simple, a slightly quizzical first uh, piece of technology. Uh, and there also looks to be some sort of effect going on on the left-hand side of the screen. Maybe you can go into a bit more detail about that. Yeah, so uh, I've noticed that he adds like a light leak. I think that's what it's called. Um, right. To like the left and to the left. Usually. No, I think couple of his videos is on the right a couple on the left but whatever it does it doesn't really matter but i think um with his thumbnails it's very simple and a way to like kind of spice it up like only a little bit he doesn't you know want to overdo it is just add a light leak on the side um so that there's some sort of color that enters and you can see that the light is this like the same colors as like the screen right there it's like yeah. purplish right so he sticks to that theme and also you can see the facial expression of his um and you can see what's in the video. You can probably tell what the video is about from this, like a review. Yeah. And like, it ha like the title would probably be um, something either like wrong about it or something good about it because you can see his facial ex expression. Yeah. He's just looking at it. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Would you say there's any effects going on with that screen? Because it looks as if it's really vibrant and it has punch. Uh, like it maybe it's up the saturation or something on the, on the image. Yeah, probably because his face is like normal, like it's just normal, but then the the screen is brighter. So yeah. probably a way to focus, um, you know, drive focus to the screen is to make it more vibrant. And maybe like um, that's like the, about like what the video is about, like maybe in a point in the video is like the screen is very, you know, good or something like that. Maybe yeah. that was intentional. Um, but yeah. 
Cool. Well, f thanks for your feedback there on some very successful YouTubers with uh, millions of subscribers. We're now going to move to a channel which has slightly less uh, subscribers, uh, maybe somebody who's not quite um, experienced at making <laughs> thumbnails, and that's me. Uh, we're going to put uh, some of VidIQ's thumbnails now in front of Stephen to, to get his... Uh, I'm going to hope for constructive criticism, both good and bad. Uh, we've got three thumbnails here. So the first one is me holding what looks to be a, a, a magnifying glass with some graph and like a blurred background. Um, what are your general thoughts, first of all, on, on like the style of these thumbnails? I think it fits what you're trying to do, who you're trying to like, the audience you're trying to you know, get. Um, because I, I don't know. I don't know why I, I think of that, but... It, I think it fits who like your target audience. I really yeah. think that. Um, one thing though, I think you should probably in the first thumbnail. Um, I think there's like probably too many colors. Like even though yeah. there's only like three colors. Yeah, uh, good. I I think the green. I don't know why, or the blue. Probably the magnifying glass is probably like what's. Um, it's a bit. There's too many like contrasting colors. Yeah. Foreground, isn't there? It, yeah. Like you can you can add a lot of colors. It's just that they have to complement each other really well. Yeah. So like if, if you're gonna do blue, you can do like purple and white. I think you know that fits kind of like they're on the same, you know, level stuff like that. So usually you want like a white background and then like two different colors yeah. that kind of complement each other. Uh, I think the background you can either make, you, you could probably make the background like a little darker because they kind of. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe not, maybe not blur the background, um, and just leave it like that, and just make it a little bit darker. Um, but to be honest, it looks really good, um, and I like how there's like that branding, that vidIQ in the corner. Yeah, I think that's important. I think a lot of people should do that. Like I don't personally do that, but you should. Like that's a good idea. Um, and yeah, I, I like how you added the stroke. I mentioned that before. Um, it, it, you know, kind of magnifies. You know, like kind of drives focus. And it makes it stand out. Yeah. Um, and what's your attitude to adding like a very subtle border to screen, um, thumbnails? That's something that I've always done. And I feel as if in a suggested column, it stands out a bit more. But yeah, yeah, is, that, is that a good strategy or a bad strategy? I don't, I, I don't think it, like, it's a good or bad strategy. If it works for you, it works for you. I know, yeah. a, lot of, I know a couple people who do that. I think usually like um, business people do it like uh, people who make business videos like that sort of stuff it stands out I think in the rec recommended like you said like Gary Vaynerchuk does that on yeah. his videos but it's like a different type of border it's like slanted a little bit I think um, he did it so that it would stand out even from people who make you know ad borders um, but I think it's good and if the I don't know just like it's whatever like you could do it if you want um, and sometimes I look at like, I know Zyovo, he used to do round corners. That's yeah. a different thing he did. Um, it does stand out definitely. Yeah. Um, but personally I wouldn't do it because I like to have as much in, um, in thumbnail as I can. So like cutting off like a little bit is like a lot to me. And that's why in my videos, I don't add crop lines at the top. Like I know a lot of people like in their films and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not, not like when they do short films and stuff, they'll add like a crop line and then it takes a lot away from the video. But like if the border works for you, it works for you. Yeah, so, sounds like a personal preference thing. Yeah. And just actually one more thing, if I was to criticize my own thumbnail here is that in this first one, I look a little washed out. And uh, so I maybe need yeah. to uh, change my skin tone a little bit through um, Photoshop. Yeah. I think you're a little bit like, um, I don't know. You kind of fade into the background. Exactly. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Yeah. So uh, it's almost like, as if I subconsciously took on your advice there with a, a like two or three weeks before this interview and in the second one uh, this is to do with tag templates where um it's a much cleaner background and um yeah. i think i fixed the skin tone a little a little bit uh, is there anything different there that you'd like to add mm, i think it looks good i think um maybe if you made the tags a little bit smaller but that's just preference to be honest uh, yeah. i think yeah, I think for the stroke part, I think you could increase it a little bit. Because, okay. Yeah, because like on the first one, no, the second one I think is fine, but the first thumbnail, um, it's you can kind of see like little bumps in the in like the stroke, uh, yes. because it, I think if you increase it, it kind of creates like a thicker line, and it just it's just straight. Yeah. I think yeah, but that's just preference once again. I think it's preference on like what you're trying to like what you like, but yeah. 
I think for like your thumbnails overall, I think it fits your target audience. Yeah. I, I just, if anybody's listening to this, it's, it's fascinating now that Stephen and I are just basically talking YouTube shop and we're going into the real subtle differences in a thumbnail. And yeah, uh, it can really, it can really like change every, like, yeah, the, like you can have very nice thumbnails and your videos can be bad, but people will still watch. Like, yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. that's the importance of a thumbnail. Uh, 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 people sometimes say that they spend as long doing a thumbnail as they do their video because getting the viewer into that video is so difficult. Actually, somebody watching a video is the easiest part. It's getting them to click on that thumbnail to begin with. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I started off, my videos weren't so good. I think the like main reason I got a lot of views was because the title and the thumbnail like really fit each other well. Yep, exactly. The, the way I branded myself was really good. I think uh, like my thumbnails was like my thumbnails were on point. Banner logo stuff like that intro it all fit seamlessly i think yeah. that's a big reason why um i was able to grow yeah uh, so very quickly the final one there is there anything else to add um again bright background color but clean black foreground mm. t-shirt i uh, yeah i think i would like add a picture um like over the gradient uh, and then just like lower the transparency a bit so that there's some sort of like texture or something in the background because um like this is preference really but yeah i just don't r like really s just solid backgrounds like i want some sort of texture or something in the background um just so it isn't so plain but like it's like what is this video but i'm not even really sure what the video is probably okay, all so, yeah, yeah, so yeah there we are it's not not exactly telling a story of an easy it's about um when one of our videos got demonetized and like, yeah, you can you can kind of tell if you look like deeper into it um I think it would have been a, uh, been a bit better if it was just like the demonetization symbol. Yeah. So that, like, I think the bat or whatever that is, um, <laughs> if it's like, it, it kind of is like as big as like the other object, like the other things in the, in the thumbnail. So if you just like leave just one of them or just yeah. like take out one of them, I think it would add more emphasis on the, the symbol. And then people won't even like have to think about what the video is about. They'll see the symbol. They'll see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really just adding texture in the background a little bit, like a photo, it doesn't matter. Um, and then just taking out like one or two of the picture images. Um, so it's just, it's just easier to under, like just look at it and know what it's about. Yeah. Thank you very much for the advice, Stephen. Um, what I'll do is you won't be able to see this, um, but I'm going to, I had about three or four different thumbnail ideas for this um, video. So I'll put them on screen now and uh, people who are watching this video, by all means comment on any of the thumbnails that you've seen here and let us know what you think. Uh, but thank you again, Stephen, for your, for your advice. I'll try and put it into practice in future uh, thumbnails. Um, let's go back to you now, then as a YouTuber, what do you think your greatest strengths and weaknesses are? I think my greatest strength is, um, I, I think I'll, a lot of people like make you pay for information. I think for me, it's like, I'm really open to giving out like, free advice, stuff like that, replying, um, making content that pro people don't want to make, um, stuff like that. Cause there's a lot of, um, creators who will make you pay for certain things, like a guide to how to do certain things. I think for me, it's just like open source. Like you can, I'll, you ask me, I'll make a video on it. And then like there, like, because I make videos on things that I'm doing right now because I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer. There's people who are photographers and videographers who have questions on how I do certain things. So I think the value that the value that I'm bringing people is like my biggest strength. Mm -hmm. My weakness right now, I think is probably, uh, I think my, I, really it's my consistency right now. I haven't been really consistent, but in terms of like my videos and how, like how, how they are, I think, uh, my presentation, I could be a little bit better with it. I can be more concise. I can, you know, where things better a certain way. Uh, I've been improving that because if you check my first couple of videos, it's very bad. Um, but I think also the editing is clean for mine. I think for, that's one of my strengths also just keeping it very clean, concise and just knowing what people want and then providing that. Yeah. I, th I think your um, video average tends to be about four to seven minutes long. Um, yeah. And which, which is, a, a, I think a good length for, especially for tutorials. Um, who are your, um, who are your YouTube inspirations? A lot of the inspirations I have, like in general, not even in YouTube, are people that are outside my field who are doing other things. So, like, uh, I like Nerdwriter. He does some, like he he does like 
video journals about certain things, topics. I, I like anything really topic discussion based. So I like complex hustle who have a, who have a series called um, the blueprint with, who the interview people. So I like watching interviews. So if um, you're someone like Gary Vaynerchuk, who has a lot of talk down stuff, like sit down um, discussions. I like those type of channels. Um, and I like a lot of lifestyle type channels. So like Justin, he has a channel, even like Justin Escalona. Uh, he's another channel. He's like, Anybody really relatable and like is around my age, I think really helps, but also anybody who covers discussions, stuff like that. Um, so I'll even like watch like videos about like hip hop and rap. Like I am interested in it, but usually I wouldn't watch videos on that, but just because it's a discussion and there's opinions and there's different things. Um, I like to watch it because I think the more you learn, it's like the better. Um, there's certain things you can pick and take out, you know, of stuff you watch that will help you out. Like, like, you know, like a year ago, I wouldn't think that'd be, you know, reading self-help books right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really just anything I can really get value from. So interviews, podcasts, discussions, and then the reason I watch lifestyle channels and stuff like that is because there are certain videos they make that will be about like how they made improvement to, you know, a certain thing in their life and it changed, you know, like how they got more sleep, stuff like that. Like just small, subtle things. Like they'll mention something about like how they balance their workers, you know, something that that's why I watch a lot of channels that are my age because there's things that they do that will help me like, like do what I'm currently going through. You know what I mean? So, yeah. One more thing we're going to do here, and it's a new thing that I'm going to introduce to our vid IQ interviews is um, a quick fire round uh, where your answers need to be as quick as possible. It could be one word, one sentence. Uh, so uh, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So other than uh, YouTube, what social media platform do you use most? Uh, Twitter or Instagram. And that's probably more than YouTube, actually. Probably okay. on YouTube. Yeah. What's your current main video camera and why in one sentence? Uh, Sony A6300 because of autofocus. Good answer. Uh, what would you be doing if you weren't making YouTube videos? I would be still creating videos, just not publishing it online. <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite sport and which team do you support? Uh, basketball and the Toronto Raptors. Like, uh, Raptors. <laughs> couldn't get anyone else really, could it? We, yeah. we the North. Yeah. Uh, how much YouTube do you watch each week? Probably s five hours. Yeah. Uh, one thing you would change about YouTube right now? The videos. Uh, wait. <laughs> like, That's a tough question. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, that, that can be attacked. Like, many. <laughs> uh, one thing you change about YouTube right now? I, I think. Uh, I think like the the transparency they have. Like, you know, they're not as transparent, and they don't really tell you what's going on. Okay. Uh, with, uh, have yeah. you ever told anyone how much you earn on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. What, um, were you nervous about doing that or were, did you get some interesting responses from that? It's very just close people that I know. Yeah. So I, like, okay. I, yeah. If you could only make one more video, what would it be about? It'd be uh, how to get started on YouTube and like be 50 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> good, yeah, good answer. Uh, so favorite book? Oh, favorite book. Um, I haven't read a lot of like, I haven't read a lot of books. Uh, actually, there's I like the Harry Potter series. I like okay. those type of things. But if you're talking about like just so, like in general, I like I just read a book called Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God. Um, so that was really good because I, I, I didn't really like him as a person until I read the book. Favorite movie? <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness. Favorite music? genre uh one track from one artist uh furthest thing by drake and who outside your family has been the biggest influence on you and why uh there's this guy on youtube i met him a couple like two years ago uh, at this social media event um sneaker talk he runs a channel um he's influenced me a lot because he's helped me all out uh helped me out a lot I would like business school, like literally anything I can ask him, he'll help me out. Excellent. Thank you very much. You've successfully negotiated the quick fire round there. One or two uh, hesitations, but I'll yeah. give you an eight out of 10 now. 
Uh, okay, let's move on to uh, vidIQ now. I assume you do use it. And if yes. you do, what are your favorite tools? There was, I think there was a syncing feature with Facebook. I, I'm not sure if that's still there. Um, you mean syndicating videos through yeah, uh, Facebook? Yeah. yeah, that still exists. Yeah, so that's very helpful. I, I use that probably the most because I don't want to, you know, have to do everything myself. I think vidIQ just saves you a lot of time. Um, definitely like the tags, um, tags feature where you can like find like, the best tags to use like it helps me determine the best tags to use i think that's probably the best thing but also the the facebook thing as well yeah. okay and if you were to give one piece of advice for any video creator just starting out on youtube today what would it be keep striving to learn as much as you can because like the more you know like the better like there's never like even if it's not about video just learn, just keep learning and learning and it'll eventually help you out in some situation. There's a lot of things I, I watch and, you know, read books about that have nothing to do with what I'm doing, but it somehow helps me out, you know? So, yeah. Thank you very much, Stephen. Well, that brings to the end of this vidIQ interview. I hope you all found it um, enjoyable and informative. If you do have any questions for Stephen, post them in the comments below and I'm sure we'll uh, take a look at them once this video goes live. It just leaves me to say thank you very much for your time, Stephen. No problem. I'm happy to be on here. And uh, we'll see you again soon on vidIQ interviews. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.